Hi, I'm Tim Doria, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to add an additional node onto a running Hadoop cluster. So uh, in my previous video, I demonstrated how to create a three node cluster using commodity hardware you could find around the house. Uh, this evening, I found an additional uh, old Sony Bio laptop computer in my basement that my mother-in-law gave me uh, probably about four or five months ago. Uh, it had a virus and the keyboard was kind of messed up. She was looking to get a replacement, so she uh, gave it to me. And I haven't had a use for it, so I think it would be pretty neat to add it in as an additional node into my cluster. Um, now, given that we already had three nodes in the cluster, we, we do have three nodes in the cluster right now, and we, I also have a Windows 7 desktop connected into my four port router. I ran out of uh, ports, and so what I did is I had to add an additional switch in, connect that switch to the router, and then put um, my uh, new, or rather, the Sony Bio laptop uh, Ethernet into that switch. So uh, the router assigned it to uh, 192.168.1.168. And so we're going to take it from there. Uh, we currently, let me, um, I'm in the master of my uh, three node cluster. Now if I run JPS, you can see that all of my, um, all my demons are running. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just create a new tab here. I'm going to SSH into 192.168.1.168, which is the additional machine I want to add in. All right, and this machine has been configured similar to my uh, video one. Uh, so if you just follow video one and follow it exactly, that's the setup that we have here as we're logging in. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I need to go into the interfaces, network interfaces. So I'm gonna do ETC network interfaces, type in my password, and I need to change my network interface so uh, to do that I'm just going to get rid of this DHCP make it static and then I'm going to put in um, an address of 192.168.1.168 which is what the router assigned it currently but I want to set that in stone and make that static and then I have my additional um, in, uh, router information here as well as the DNS uh, Google search alright I'm going to write this and exit. Next I'm going to go into my host name file. I'm going to delete this out and I'm going to call this machine slave03 write and quit. And now I recommend restarting machine the machine so I'm going to do sudo shutdown restart now. Okay, so it's just going to take a few moments for it to restart. In the meantime, I'm going to go over to my master. Might as well close this out. I'll just exit. Go back over to my master. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the hosts file on the master so that we have the new slave machine added. Okay, so I'm just going to insert 192.168.1.168 as slave03. And as a note, and this is very important, we need to copy this file, the uh, etc host file, over to the new slave as well as the other machines. And so I'm just going to do that in a couple minutes once the other machine starts back up. Okay, so quit. And then what I'm going to do is edit my Hadoop slaves file configuration. And we're just going to add slave03 as a slave. Okay, so let me just open up a new tab make sure that my machine slave 03 is running perfect okay so to make it easier to copy that etc host file over what I'm going to do is just change the owner of 
the host file. So I'm going to do sudo chown, so let's change the owner, user Hadoop, because this is going to be part of the Hadoop configuration going forward since this machine is going to be used exclusively as a, a node. Okay, let me just do an ls to make sure it looks good. Perfect. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the other two machines that we have running. So ssh slave 02, ssh slave one oops okay and what I'm going to do is just change the owner of the host file on both of these okay and I'm gonna exit okay I'm gonna exit this Okay, so let's go back to the master, and uh, the next step is I'm going to copy my key, uh, SSH key, public, over to the new slave. Dot SSH, ID, RSA, public. Copy it over to HD user at slave 03. Make sure that looks good. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to take that host file and send it over to HD user slave 03. Copy it. I'm just going to copy this over because we're going to actually do this for all the slaves just to keep them in sync. And normally you would write a script to automate this. Perfect. Let's do 02, 01. All right, so now all our hosts are synced. Let's just confirm that. So what I'm going to do is cat etc hosts. And you can see we have the master, slave, slave 2, slave 3 which is the new one. Excellent. All right, let's go back here. So now I also want to copy the configurations from the current Hadoop cluster over to that new slave. So to do that, I'm going to just use rsync. I'm going to use dash a for archive since we're going to do the entire configuration directory. Um, HD user Hadoop config and we're going to send this over to HD user at slave03 home HD user that do done all right let's just confirm that that worked so I'm just going to CD into that directory Okay, I'm just going to do a cat of any of these files could work. Let's just do core site XML. Perfect. We see that master is set here. And uh, so that means that it indeed copied over. All right. All right. So now, uh, this is a, a very important piece that is often overlooked. Uh, if we were to simply start this new slave um, and incorporate it into the uh, current cluster, we're going to run into a namespace ID error. It's going to show up as a Java IO exception, and that's because the namespace ID on the standalone slave that we had set up before is separate or is going to be different than the three node cluster that we had configured. So, in order to synchronize those, what we need to do is copy the namespace ID from the name node on the master to the data node on the slave 03. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to simply cat the temporary directory, the fs name, friend of the name node, current version. OK, 
Okay, and here's what we want. So I'm just going to copy this entire line here. Make sure you get all the digits. I'm going to go over to my slave and I'm going to do a VI. Temp DFS. Okay, make sure you put data in here. Okay, that's the important thing. It goes to the data node. Current version. Okay, and this is what we want to replace. You see how it's different? That's going to cause an issue. So I'm going to delete that out, insert, paste the name space ID, escape, write, quit. All right. So I think the configuration is uh, is complete. So now let's start up our uh, slave daemons. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the bin directory for Hadoop. And I'm going to use the script Hadoop daemon.sh start data node. Okay, and you can see it's starting. To confirm that it's started, I'm just going to do JPS enter. And we can see there that the data node is running. Next, for the map reduce side of the equation, we want to start the task tracker. So to do that, we're going to do Hadoop daemon.sh start task tracker. Enter. Okay, it takes a couple of seconds. Okay, now let's do JPS. There we go. So we see our data node, task tracker are now running. Uh, now what we do is we go back to the master and we just need to refresh uh, the nodes uh, to tell them, uh, tell the cluster, hey, uh, take a look to make sure that we have all of them in place. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to just run Hadoop MR, which stands for Map Reduced Admin dash Refresh Nodes. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the same, but instead of Map Reduce, let's do it for the distributed file system. So Hadoop. DFS admin refresh nodes. That's it. So at this point, we have now added that additional slave into our operating cluster without taking down the cluster at any point in time. To confirm that we in did indeed add this node in, what we can do is uh, simply let's fire, fire up our web browser. So I'll just type in Firefox. It's going to take a second for it to show up. And what we're going to do is, here we go. Let's just go to our name node. So I'm going to do HTTPS, or rather HTTP, I'm sorry. Master colon 50070. And that's our Hadoop administration for the name node. Click enter. All right, so what we can see here is an overview of the capacity. And so if we had looked at the other uh, the settings prior to uh, um, us adding that node in, you would have noticed that these values would have been less. As you can see here, the number of live nodes is now four, meaning that we have four machines. If we click on here, we can see that we indeed have added this additional node in and we can see that um, it's in service. Everything is in service here. Now one of the things you might notice is that the other machines all have blocks of data on them whereas this new slave because we just added it in does not have any blocks of data and so what we can do to kind of reallocate the data is run another script called the start balancer and so what we're going to do is just exit out here and let's um, go back to the bin for Hadoop. Let's go start balancer.sh run. And what this does, uh, I apologize, start balancer dash, start dash balancer sh. And what this is going to do is reallocate the space uh, and the data on our nodes. So let's Go ahead and now check to see if it made any changes. Uh, 
Okay, and you can see it did reallocate a little bit, not too much. That's because we don't have all too much data on our nodes right now. So it put one block on uh, on there. We could also look at the log files to confirm um, the process. And as we add more data in, you'll see that the number of blocks will increase. All right, so that concludes adding an additional node to a cluster.